Um, quotes out of Buffalo sound way different than quotes out of Houston when describing Stefan Diggs. Here was Josh Allen asked a day or two ago if he if he misses his former wide receiver one, Stefan Diggs. At any point during camp, have you missed Stefan? Um, I mean, I think Steph's a great player, and what he brought to this team was was special. Um, so, miss is is I don't know if I'd say miss. Um, you know, he was a guy that was reliable. You can you can look to. He's going to have the juice each and every day. I'm sure he's bringing it over there in Houston. Um, so definitely, yeah, I, you can't say that you don't miss that. Um, but I am very happy with the, what we got going on here and how hard the guys have been working. And um, yeah. He was asked if he misses him, and he said a lot of stuff to say he doesn't miss him. Yeah, I was going to say, the the thing to me is it's one thing if you want to kind of make sure that you don't say too much to make it look like you, you're you not high on your receivers or like the receivers you got, but it's fair to say you miss a guy that was as productive as he was in the system if you mean it. And if you don't, then just say you don't miss him. Yeah, I mean, it's it, he's trying to avoid the backlash. He doesn't want it to become a headline. He doesn't want it to become clickbait or a distraction. So I understand where, where he's coming from answering the question. AJ, cue it up again. When, if, if you were asked, hey, do you miss your wife? Well, what's the answer? Yes. Immediate, yes. yes. Hey, Blinkers, do you miss your kids? Yes. Yes. Uh, do you miss anything that you actually miss? Yes. Immediately you say yes. And then you might give the reasons why, but immediately you're saying yes. If you don't miss somebody, like you have an annoying friend or an annoying neighbor, do you miss this guy? Eh, little hesitation, little pause, and then maybe you're PC. Maybe you're nice with the way that you kind of let down that question. But if you miss somebody, it's an immediate no hesitation yes. If you don't, it's usually balking, waiting, hesitating. And again, Josh Allen asked the question, do you miss Stefan Diggs? At any point during camp, have you missed Stefan? Um, I mean, I think... He doesn't miss him? He doesn't Steph's miss that. Uh, I mean, I think, team was, and then was says special. a lot of great things. That's good, AJ. Thank you. Like, so, uh, I, think, I mean, I think. If he missed Stephon Diggs, he'd say, yes, I missed Steph. Yes. Yes, I do. But we have a great thing going on here. Yes, but I love the collections of receivers we have here. He was asked if he misses Stephon Diggs, and he did not say yes. He doesn't miss yeah. Stephon Diggs. It's See, very clear. You're right. I think that, and the takeaway that I had immediately was he never, he he, he never wanted to say he, he missed him. And that's the one thing. But when I heard the question again, the fact that when you had the easiest escape route of all, because if you just want to take the high road, just say, do I miss him at camp? No, because he's gone. And we've got, this is a new camp, new receivers, and we're moving forward. Then you're fine and you're done with it too. You're absolutely right that the, the, the indirect body, not body language, but the the way he comes across is, yeah, he he does not miss Stefan Diggs. Yeah, and he the 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 answer of how you do this is you lie. Yes, or we miss Stefan sure, yeah. Diggs, but we love the guys we have here, and we think we're going to have a great year. And then no one's even talking mm-hmm. about this. But he couldn't, he couldn't, because the natural reaction, do you miss the guy? Was eh, I really don't? How am I going to dance around this question? He goes, uh, I mean, I think he doesn't miss Stefan Diggs. Uh, Sean McDermott. Today was asked about the Bills' new lo- uh, new look in the wide receiver room. He said, "Quote: I like where the unselfishness is for that position. That's not a shot at Stephon Diggs. <laughs> That's a direct shot. Who's gone out of the receiver room that was there last year? Gabe Davis. Stephon Diggs. That, <laughs> no, that is true. Steph- he's gone, but it, I don't believe Gabe Davis is going to be looked at the same way. The Buffalo Bills also traded Stephon Diggs, where it took more of a hit." on them than keeping him on the roster. It would have been cheaper for the Bills to keep Stephon Diggs than to trade Stephon Diggs. So quarterback asked, do you miss Diggs? Uh, I mean, I think Sean McDermott. I like where the unselfishness is for that position. The Bills in the offseason trade away a negative financial situation because they wanted to get rid of the personality in the room. So this is how Buffalo has treated Stephon Diggs. And I'm not saying that they're wrong, but head coach, unselfishness in the, in the receiver room. Quarterback doesn't miss him. The general manager trades him whenever it's more expensive to trade him. But then meanwhile, in Houston, you have D'Amico Ryans going on with Kay Adams talking about how big a leader Stephon Diggs is. Many stories of Steph, I don't see him all the time. I see some of them, but I hear so many more of him after practice, working with DBs, working with receivers, talking to Lamba. It's just, 
that's what that's what a leader is, right? And Steph shows that every day. He shows up every day with the unbelievable energy, right, to him and about himself. Mm -hmm. He just I love him. he brings it, right? I love him. I love what he's shown to our team so far. But he's a leader. You're saying Stephon Diggs is a leader. No doubt about it. There's no doubt about he's a leader, right? And I told our guys like when you feel his passion, you feel his energy, you show he sees how much he cares. Like everybody needs to get that in their spirit. <laughs> There you go. I have no idea who Stefan Diggs is. In a text right now, he didn't want to slide his current receivers. The narrative you also hear from the fan bases are, are unbelievable because Buffalo Bill fans don't like him. Uh, Houston Texans fans, because he's the new guy, because he is uber talented and they want him to be successful because it means good things for the Texans, you're blindly defending Stefan Diggs. We have no idea who Stefan Diggs is other than the coach saying he's a good leader and during training camp and the team's liking him. Although there is a lot of incentive for Stefan Diggs to do that. Why? Because he's on the final year of his contract. So, like, the fan base wants to automatically defend him because he's the new guy on their team and they want their team to do well. I have no idea who Stefan Diggs is. I have no idea, because I trust D'Amico. I have no idea if he's the guy that D'Amico is saying is a leader, is a captain, although they were saying the same things about Stevie Nelson last year, and they called him a milk dud guy. Uh, but then you have Buffalo guys that are saying, oh, yeah, we're selfless without him. I don't miss him. And then they're, again, trading him whenever it's more expensive to trade him rather than keeping him. I, I, Stefan Diggs is bipolar. Is bipolar depending on what city and the perspective of the city you're looking at it from. But I think you can also say that both things could – can be true because he 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 very easily whether you want to say he wore out his welcome in Buffalo or it's just the fact that they don't want that potential distraction that we saw kind of play out before our eyes in the highlights and the videos and the sidelines and everything that they've been through but that he's a businessman too and he realizes that whether he thought he was wrong or not in the way he acted in Buffalo and or before that in Minnesota that because of what you mentioned because he's become coming a free agent at the end of the year no one's going to want to touch him if the fact is is that this is the way he's labeled. So for him to come out of the gates already trying to you know make a positive impression, be a leader, be a guy that's a great teammate, hearing everybody talking about him, he has to do that if he wants another contract that's more than a year at a time. And so I think both things can be true. Is 8807 contract year digs greater than long-term contract digs? Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's about maximizing the value of the player. And – we, we looked at that contract, the, it wasn't an extension, um, the handling of the contract with Diggs when they ripped up the second year and they turned it into a one-year deal. And it's like, oh, why are you making this trade of a future second for a one-year of Stephon Diggs? It's clear. It's obvious. They're trying to maximize mm -hmm. the player. They feel like they can get more on an expiring contract, Stephon Diggs, than they can the first of a, what's two years remaining on a contract extension, Stephon Diggs. They did the same thing with Steven Nelson without extending him. Uh, Nelson was unhappy with his contract. Contract. He was pouting. He, he was just uh, disenchanted with the organization. What did the Texans do? They gave him a bump in salary, and they put a C on his chest to try to bring the most out of the player. They're doing the exact same thing with Stephon Diggs. Diggs, we're going to trade a second rounder for you. We're going to get rid of that two-year deal you're on, which is a contract you're not happy with. We're going to make it a one-year deal, and now we're going to try to bring the most out of you. Yeah, no, and at the same time, they're also protecting their own rear ends because whether – you don't know what their intel is or isn't, but from what they you know are trying to guard the, the rest of this team from, because they know that they are in somewhat go for it mode, they have a really good team. They don't want to screw it up. They, they're covering their own butts too by saying, "Hey, if he gets out of hand, or there is truth to and there's substance to what we've seen and or heard or thought we might think it went down in Buffalo." They can get out. Yeah, it's uh, it's fascinating though hearing one perspective of a player and another perspective of the player, and I I. I I think I like Stephon Diggs. I'm not sure who he is. Case says great things about Stephon Diggs, so I, I'll believe Case. But he is in the contract extension. There is incentive for him to play well. I think Casario, now, I don't love the trade, second rounder for yeah. one year on a player, but I do like the way he handled the contract of Diggs because I do think it's going to get the most out of him this year in 2024. I think it's just the most protective of the team, too, because of the fact that if if things do go wayward, you can get out and you're not on the hook. Yep. And so I think that factors in as well, too, because of the fact that you are, I, I believe that you are truly going to get a guy that's going to be 110% dialed in, and he's going to give you everything he's got, and it's going to be a huge boost to this offense. But we've both been realistic in the fact that there's probably not a big chance that he's going to be back after this year mm -hmm. regardless. So you just need him to be that for you for this season, 
and you give CJ and this team the best chance to be very, very highly potent and successful offensively. One zero two two. I don't remember, but I wonder how the Bills acquired Diggs would compare to when the Texans acquired him. Did the Bills rave about him in year one too? I'm sure they did. It's the honeymoon phase. It's the honeymoon phase for anything. Like whenever you get a new player, when you get a new, like you have interest in the player, you want to see how the player does. I didn't like the Kikuchi trade, but I'm fascinated when he pitches because he's new. Uh, it's like buying a car. Like the the first few weeks of having a new car, you're like, you know, you're mesmerized by the new thing that the car has that your previous car doesn't but then the further and further you get away the warts begin to show up and you're like oh okay uh here's something i don't like about the vehicle here's something i don't like about the player so when you acquire a player that's usually very much so unless the means of acquiring him you do not like very much in the honeymoon phase you think about it from the standpoint of you heard things about harden but when harden was traded the first year they were doing the same kind of things, throwing money at him, but more so than that, giving him the keys to the car, saying he's going to be the guy. He was a, a good camper and, and, and a happy camper and a, and a good soldier, and everything was going great. But then once he kind of settled in that this is my team, my squad, I'm going to do whatever I want. Dwight Howard, same thing. You bring Dwight Howard in, and in the first year, whatever you heard about what he did with Van Gundy and how difficult he was and all these other things, he was all in. And then all of a sudden, once he got comfortable, he's you know, making the team wait late for planes, not, you know, doing whatever he wants. And then you see the true colors. A poncho saying that uh, I'm not, he said the best thing you can say about Diggs is, well, at least he hasn't beaten up multiple, multiple women yet. Like Mixon has, we're not going to read that poncho. And I don't think it was multiple, multiple? women. I think it was just the it's one, just the one in college, just the one. Right? Not, not that it makes it okay. No, it does not. And not that we're going to read it, Poncho, but I think it was just the one. Uh, King of Twitch, I'm not a big NFL guy, but even I know if Diggs doesn't eat, he will cry. I thought King of uh, All Twitch was king of all NFL. I didn't realize that. A uh, couple on the text line here. Uh, Texans going back to the playbook. Diggs, captain incoming. I, I could see it. I could really see it. I mean, D'Amico's raving about what a leader oh. Stephon Diggs is. I could see them doing the same thing they did with Steven Nelson, making him a captain and making him feel important. A lot of times to get the most out of somebody, you give them stock of the company. You give them stock in the company. That way they feel like they're extremely valued and extremely important, which, I mean, Diggs is. But I think that's the way to also get the most out of Diggs. Hey, Diggs, we're giving you ownership in our franchise, not literally, to try to bring the most out of Stefan Diggs. But you mentioned it. It's the, the perfect example of we've done this before, so why would they not do it previously? If they do it for Brandon Cooks, they're going to do it here too if they feel like it's something that is going to be in everybody's best interest interest if he's showing this leadership and stuff wouldn't surprise me in the in the least if they made him a captain nine six 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 i think it's a little different buffalo acquired Diggs to be the guy he might be a number three here less power i also think though that Diggs is the number one voice in the room though like he might yeah. not be the number one receiver at the top of the depth chart or have the number one stats on the texans in 2024 but i do think he's the loudest voice in the room i think he's the most oh. respected voice in the room without un, uh, unquestioned to me without a doubt he's the loudest and, and most respected voice in the room you heard nico talking about the fact that you know he had his posters on the wall and, and was a fan of his when he was in seventh and eighth grade when when Diggs was playing so it, there, there's no yeah Nico was saying that about Cooks I mean about uh Diggs D'Amico had pictures of no not Diggs? D'Amico oh Diggs had Nico, photos of Nico Demi Collins had, oh, had Nico. pictures okay. of Diggs I was like the math's not math no no, there. no 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 <laughs> so Nico Collins was talking about in in seventh and eighth grade being a huge Diggs fan and and all that kind of stuff the only other guy just from but didn't have the same kind of career was Robert Woods. But in the receiver room, I think everybody, and rightfully so, so should be listening and learning from Diggs. You said Woods has had the same career as Diggs? No, I said they haven't had the same career, but just from an experience standpoint. Yeah. He's a veteran receiver in the room, yeah, okay. but he hasn't had the same career. Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not the production that Diggs has. Keith, uh, goodness, I hope we play the Bills in the AFC Championship game, and Diggs goes off. Uh, that would be a lot of fun. Bills play the Texans this year, don't they? I believe they do. Yeah, I believe that they do. I yep. believe it's in Houston, too. So that's a game that's going to be... Yeah, remember we called it the, the Stefan Diggs Bowl. Did we? Yeah, because we were when we were looking at what might be a national TV game, it's week that five. was the reason why. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were surprised that it was not yes. a national television yes. game because that's a it's a noon Sunday game, week five against the Bills. It would be better, though, if it was in Buffalo. That still will be appointment television. I mean, all games are. But if it was in Buffalo, I think it adds more intrigue. Yeah, first time back. Yeah. Yeah, and just to see how the fans would treat them. Because we've done that in the past with so many trades when their first time, you know, big names are going back for the first time. It's a big deal. Let's get to the uh, the general John McClain. What do he has to say about Stephon Diggs and which Diggs uh, the Texans are getting? And also, Andre Johnson, the Hall of Fame. 
McLean was there. He's covered every single Andre Johnson game. We'll get his perspective from that as well. It's the Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5.